Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning Hamelin towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover city The river Vaser deep and wide washes its walls in the southern side A pleasanter spot you never spied But when begins my ditty almost five hundred years ago To see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity Rats they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and ate the cheeses out of the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, split open the kegs of salted sprats, made nests inside men's Sunday hats and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different shops and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. "'Tis clear, cried they, our mares are naughty. And as for our corporation, shocking. To think we buy gowns lined with ermine for dolts that can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic robies? Rouse up, sirs. Give your brains a racking to find the remedy we're lacking. Or sure as fate we'll send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I'd my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I've scratched it so and all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should hap? At the chamber door but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor. What's that? But the corporation, as he sat, looking little no wondrous fat, nor brighter was his eye nor moister than a too long opened oyster, save when at noon his punch grew mutinous for a plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on the mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, the mayor cried, looking bigger. And then did come the strangest figure. His queer long coat from heel to head was half of yellow and half of red. And he himself was tall and thin with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin, and light loose hair, yet swarthy skin. No tuft on cheek, no beard on chin, but lips where smiles went out and in. There was no guessing his kith and kin. And nobody could enough admire the tall man and his quaint attire. Quoth one, this has my great grandsire, starting up at the trump of doomstone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced to the council table, and, please your honours, said he, I am able, by means of a secret charm, to draw all creatures living beneath the sun that creep or swim or fly or run after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm. On creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newton viper, and people call me the bite piper. And here they noticed round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of the selfsame check, and at the scarf's end hung a pipe. And his fingers they noticed were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing. Upon this pipe as low it dangled, over his vesture so old fangled, Yet, said he, poor piper as I am, in Tartary I freed the cham last June from his huge swarms of gnats. I eased in Asia the Nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I can rid your town of rats, would you give me a thousand guilders? One? Fifty thousand was the exclamation of the astonished mayor and corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, Smiling first a little smile, as if he knew what magic slipped in his quiet pipe the while. Then, like a musical adept, to blow the pipe his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, you heard as if an army muttered, 
And the muttering grew to a grumbling, and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses the rats came tumbling. Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, grey rats, tawny rats, grave old plodders, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the piper for their lives. From street to street he piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing until they came to the river Vaser, wherein all plunged and perished. Save one who stout as Julius Caesar swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to Rackland home his commentary, which was, At the first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe into a cider press's gripe and a moving away of pickled up boards, and a leaving a jar of conserve cupboards, and a drawing the corks of trainel flasks, and a breaking the hoops of butter casks. And it seemed as if a voice, sweeter far than by harp or by psaltery has breathed, called out, O oh, rats rejoice, the world is grown to one vast dry psaltery, so munch on, crunch on, take your nunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just as a bulky sugar punch on, already stayed like a great shun, sun shone, glorious scarce an inch before me, just as me thought it said, come bore me, I found the vessel rolling on me.